Good grief. Yeah, who knew? Who knew indeed? So, so yeah, for a guy that's uh, spent his entire life making a fool out of himself and other, in front of other people and gotten really comfortable with it, there's nothing more nerve-wracking than public speaking. So I'm thinking, that what, did, what did my wife say? Don't talk too fast, all that stuff. All right, I'll do my best. Anyway, here we go. First of all, we've got to send big thanks out to Jeff Jampol and Associates. None of this would have happened without them. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it so much. Uh, thanks to John Densmore of The Doors for this introduction. Paul Williams of Crawdaddy collared me around the time of Monterey Pop, told me to listen to your first album. He said it would be the most innovative rock album I would be likely to hear, and he would not be wrong. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it for that one. When I think about our old band, Jefferson Airplane, at moments like this, I think of what I consider to be the core members from those early Halcyon years. Grace Slick, Marty Ballin, Paul Kantner, Spencer Dryden, Jack Cassidy, Signe Anderson also, may she rest in peace, and myself. Marty, Paul, Spencer, and Signe are sadly gone, but they will not be forgotten. It's a blessing to be still standing here with longtime friends, Grace and Jack. We all traveled many miles together making music. Only touring musicians will fully appreciate this bond. It's one that can never be broken. Today we're practically around the corner from the Mark Twain Hotel on Wilcox where the band spent many nights before recording at the RCA studios at Sunset and Ivor a lifetime ago. LA was a home away from home as we recorded back then and in an odd way it is still home. All those early times have become zeitgeist for me today. We were all young together in those moments and were fortunate not only to make music, to make music that the world would hear as an artist who could want for more. My father was an Angelina. We grew up in Lincoln Heights, and he and the rest of the Calcutans who came west a century ago were buried here. Mom is too. Dad complained about my choice of an occupation early in my career. He would grudgingly allow that I had a real time, a real job as time would unfold. This star would probably put a wry smile on his face and gain some approval for affirmative of choices made by his sometimes errant son. Finally, if all the gods have aligned in today's wired world, my wife Vanessa, daughter Izzy, and son Zach are watching the old man and his cohorts receive this honor from a continent away. I love you guys. This is all an honor that would have been unthinkable when I was young, but as an 81-year-old man, I'll take it. Thank you so much. Good work, you and the... Well... Lower the microphone. How's this? Everybody's a director here in Hollywood. All right. Well, I'd like to thank Jeff and staff and, and the unbelievable, unbelievable positioning of our, our, our star here in front of the Music Institute. I think it's apropos. I was reminded of when we came down here in 1965. I think we might have even even rehearsed once in the, the uh, AFFM Music Hall, which is quite different than this facility we're looking at to my left here. But uh, as I look around, oh, that's right, we have a drummer over here, we have a bass player, we have a guitar player, we have a singer. Hey, you want to start a band? It's not too late. <laughs> in any case, when I came here in 1965, I think in November, December, it was raining constantly. It was raining so much, I think they had over, I looked it up on, on Google that there was like 30 inches of rain within in 40 days or something. And it was really like the Hollywood movies up on, on the hillsides where people carrying signs, it's the end of the world. Hollywood, the end of the world is coming because of all the rain. And we could certainly use some of that.